nice. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to import an image as a plane, and you can actually import a video. So you'll have a video as a plane, and we're going to then add a Bezier curve, add a bunch more points to it, and make a nice single line drawing around um, our video of whatever we want to rotoscope. Then we're going to use an add-on called Animal to animate the points of the Bezier curve and have some keyframes so we can just rotoscope around our object. Then we're going to add a bevel geometry to the curve so that it has some thickness. Then we're going to add a material to that. And then we're going to render it. All right, so here we go. So I'll delete the default cube, as one does. Uh, and I'm going to turn on screencast keys, which is another add-on. Um, you can add add-ons and edit preferences and all that jazz. Um, I'll add um, links to screencast keys and animal in the description. All right, so we're going to add an image as a plane. This opens up your file explorer, which you guys can't see right now, unfortunately, but I'm looking at my file explorer and I'm going to pick the video that I want. And now it's here. Um, I'm going to rotate. Okay, and now we can't see it yet. We're going to have to change our view to material. And I guessed wrong again, so rotate 180. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to scale this up. S to scale up. So now you can see we have this video as a plane, which is pretty awesome already on its own, if you think about it. Um, so now we're going to add a Bezier curve. Curve Bezier. And I have it over here for some reason, because I didn't have my cursor in the right spot when I made it, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, now we're gonna tab into edit mode. And now this is really cool. So all the same, same stuff applies, G to move, S to scale, R to rotate, and you can move these individually of each other. Uh, right click to get out of something. So if you like, you know, do something that you don't want, you left click to execute it, you can always undo, but also if you like screwed up, you can just right click and it'll cancel whatever you're doing. All right. And E to extrude and create a new control point of the Bezier curve. And another cool trick is if you select two you can hit W and subdivide, and it'll create another point just perfectly in between. I don't actually need that. And finally, if you want to close your curve, you just hit F, and it closes it. Just like you can do in edit mode when you select two edges and hit F, and it creates a face. Same idea. Um, OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and trace this entire thing out. I'll probably speed this part up. So you probably want to actually start with the best view. So like with a character or something, you wouldn't want to um, have a blurry shot. You'd want something nice. So I'm going to start here. Oh. There we go. Another thing to keep in mind is the joints. So right now it'd be easy to just like not have a knuckle here at all. But since we know this is going to bend, we're going to want to give ourselves some leeway here and some points to work with in the future. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now 
we're going to open the animate tab. We need points and tilt. And we got to make sure we have all our points selected. So you hit A to select all and then insert. And you can see that inserts a keyframe down here. Okay, now one thing is you don't want to add or delete points. Once you have your points, you're kind of, that's what you have to work with because it'll mess up your animation. Uh, it stinks. So it looks like I forgot a point here or it didn't have it selected. It's okay, so you can just delete it. And now it really hasn't moved. So what we can do is we can actually copy and paste the keyframe. And that comes in super handy if you, uh, like with the skateboarder that I did, there's certain positions that matched later in the, in the run that matched early on. So I was able to copy and paste and then just make it like some smaller adjustments than I would have if I was just to continue along with the animation as I had it already. Okay, so here's an example. It might be easier now to just grab this keyframe here. And paste it. Okay, tab out of that, we'll hide the video, and we're going to add a plane. Cool. Okay, so now you can see this looks pretty good. Um, I, I would do a lot more in-betweening and like cleaning this up, but it looks okay. So now we're going to add... Now we're doing like some steps for what I do when I render this out. So I guess one of the first things we can do is snap the camera to the current view, control alt numpad zero. And then we can make sure we have the Bezier curve selected. We're gonna add a bevel object, but first we actually need to create what we're gonna use for the bevel object. And we're gonna use a circle and I'll show you how we do that. So make sure you have your Bezier curve clicked. Go down to Object Data Properties, Geometry, Bevel Object, and Bezier Circle. And obviously it's way too big, so we'll scale it way down. And then we're going to give this material be a little funky. And then I usually do an emission and then just delete the light. Uh, I can make this an emission too. So there you go. And all right, now it's rendered out. So you go to your output properties and FFmpeg video. 
And now if we start rendering this out, um, we're going to the temp folder, which is fine. I'll just leave that. You can change it if you like. You can see we still have the hand and that's because it's hidden, but it's still enabled in renders. So you have to open the restriction toggles here, add the uh, little cameras to disable render. And now, now it should work. Oh, also we only have uh, 72 frames. So now it'll be 75. Now we can render. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it.